feels like we're talking because it's boring TV. Tech people love tech. Yeah. Consumers love the benefit of tech. Yeah. You know, no consumer opens up their iPhone and says, oh my gosh, I love the technology behind my iPhone. What's it been like being on the Shark Tank? You know, filming is fun and hanging out is fun. And it's fun to be a celebrity at first. Your head gets really big and you get really <laughs> good tables at restaurants. And Who says tech has uh, got a little pizzazz? I mean, More skin in the game. <laughs> <laughs> in charge of his destiny, Robert Hershevik. No! Dancing with stars, of course. Here is Cube Alumni. Live from Santa Clara, California, it's The Cube. Covering Open Networking Summit 2017. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Open Networking Summit 2017 in Santa Clara, California. I think it's the fourth year of the conference. Uh, we've been coming for a long time. It's pretty amazing. A lot of transformation is happening as this project moves from the conversational to the testing to actual, a lot of deployments being talked about in the keynote. So, happy to have Scott Rainovich joining me again. Great Pleasure as always, thank you. Have a good you. night last night? Excellent. All right, super. And uh, super guest, uh, Drew Schulke. He is the Vice President of Converged Networking at Dell EMC. Drew, welcome. Thanks, thanks for having us. So you've been Great busy at this show. You're doing panels, I have been, yeah. you're doing keynotes. It's, you're, it's, uh, it's, they're, they're working you. It's been a bit of a whirlwind going on uh, thus far. So yeah, I had a, had, a, had a keynote talk on economic and organizational impacts of open networking, which, was, uh, which went really, really well. A lot of great questions from the audience. Uh, you know, really insightful questions on that. Uh, have met with you know, folks like yourself, some other folks in the media, some analysts, uh, talking to some customers, which is always nice to right. have. And uh, we'll close it out tomorrow with, uh, with one of the keynotes, a panel discussion on kind of the role of open source and moving to 5G, where I'll be participating with some, some folks from Intel and Ericsson, so I'm looking right. forward to that. But uh, yeah, definitely a whirlwind week. So before uh, we get into some of the specifics, just you know, kind of your general impressions as to how this thing has evolved over time and, and kind of impressions of, of this show this year. Yeah, great question. I think that the thing that struck me the most was this year was the amount of customers coming in and actually talking about putting a lot of the things we've been talking about at this summit for several years into production environments and seeing results out of it. Um, some great keynotes last night by some folks, uh, Amadeus in the travel industry, and talking about their journey and actually moving things into production I thought was, was fabulous, which you know, gives people you know, a, a vision of what really is possible and kind of moving these out of the theoretical and here's the vision, the strategy, into here's how you can actually get things done and getting into results. And ultimately when you put things into production, that's how you ultimately learn and refine things right, over time. Right. So it's, it's a great move forward for us. Awesome. So on the economics and organizational impact of open networking, your, your keynote, what, what are some of those really key economic drivers that you outlined in that conversation? Yeah, great question. So, you can kind of break it into a CapEx and an OpEx kind of discussion. On the CapEx side, what we've seen is this whole open networking model is built upon merchant silicon and the commoditization of hardware, which may sound like, okay, look, that, that's a bad thing. Well, no, it's, it's really, really good uh, because what it's doing is it's allowing all of us to take the benefits of huge volume and scale that's going on. So from the biggest cloud providers down into the enterprise, as we move into this hardware model that's based upon merchant silicon and more standard network designs that are capable of supporting multiple OS's, we all benefit from the economies of scale that go in that. We can amortize R&D investments over a larger number of things. Uh, that's all goodness. So there's a huge you know, tailwind on the CapEx side. Uh, on the OpEx side, as we start to kind of disaggregate the network stack and focus on the individual layers, um, it creates a different operational model that allows for a high degree of automation. And so one of the things that we brought up uh, in the session was contrasting a study from 2013 where you know, the typical enterprise network admin was controlling about 300 ports. That was the, the breadth of, of support that they had back in 2013. That same year Facebook came out and said an individual operator can support you know, up to 20,000 servers. <laughs> right? and, and it's not like they're just superhumans. What happened in there was a level of automation. And so that's a key ingredient of our open networking strategy is mm -hmm. driving that automation in and that's where you get true you know, economies of scale on the op OPEX side. So those are, those are kind of the main points on that one. Yeah, good ones. So Drew, uh, one of the themes we've seen here is that, that Linux Foundation has done a good job of consolidating some of the open source yeah. technology and putting them in the same place so we can all track them and figure out what's going to happen. And uh, you know, you just told us about um, Dell donating some of your code to the Linux Correct. Foundation. Why don't you uh, explain you know, how you 
made that decision and what you think it's going to do for your customers? Yeah, absolutely. So, as a little bit of a context, what we see happening, uh, happening in terms of networking software is, one, it's become decoupled from the hardware. That's already sort of done right now. But even if we start to look at the software side, we think there's more disaggregation possible. And we can peel apart the layers of what currently is a networking operating system today and create a base operating system upon which several different companies can come in and put what at that point becomes applications on top of it to do things like an L2, L3 stack or to do you know, MLAG or, what, or tapping or, so, or anything like that. Um, and, it, and it creates an ecosystem similar to what we had with servers 20 years ago, um, where I've got an operating system that basically keeps the box running, and then I've got applications which are really the magic on top of it. So that's sort of the context. What we donated was that base OS. And so we've worked on something called OS 10. We have an open edition of it, which you can go out to the web and download for free today and start playing around with it. But it's, a, it's an unmodified Linux kernel, uh, currently based on the Debian distribution, which we believe will serve as a solid foundation for that evolving networking ecosystem going forward. Uh, Linux Foundation agreed with that and accepted our donation of that to be the, the, the foundation of the OpenSwitch project. Um, which was talked a little bit about at this particular summit as well. So we couldn't be happier to be working with the Linux Foundation on, on the OpenSwitch project um, and uh, you know, look forward to getting even more of the, of the ecosystem working on that with someone like the Linux Foundation behind it to build a very, very capable stack which ultimately benefits all, all of our customers mm -hmm. right. at the end. Yeah. And where, where will we see this code go into what types of products and what markets? Is it, is it NFE for telecom? Is it cloud servers? Uh, yeah. where, where are we going to see this? The great stuff? answer, the wonderful thing about it is the answer is all the above, right? Okay. Uh, and that's the flexibility of it. And think of it as this way, which is maybe you have a telecom network that's you know, focused on something like MPLS. Well, uh, a company that has a lot of good IP around MPLS can then write an application that can run on that base operating system, giving a customer the ability to kind of pick that specific application without having to worry about dragging on an operating system and hardware that may not be what they want. Um, so that's kind of the telecom use case. Um, maybe it's a big cloud provider that has some very specific needs around an L2, L3 stack. Um, maybe they even have their own IP around that that they want to build on top of this OS. So we've really opened up the degrees of freedom in that space across all of those industries. Um, I certainly think kind of where we see the early adopters and starting from that OS 10 base uh, solution today uh, will be more in the telco service provider and in the cloud space, mm -hmm. uh, just because of the level of scale and, and what it is that they can benefit out of this level of flexibility. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So there had to be some detractors before you open source this. I'm just curious, you know, kind of the conversation in the room about you know, should we or should we not open source this project and take it out to the Linux Foundation? And then you know, what was ultimately the decision that pushed it out the door? Yeah, no, I, so I, we had been working with some other open source based projects for a couple of years already, so there was a comfort level internally. But what we saw, I think, going on in the networking space was heavily influenced by what we saw going on in the server space 20 years ago when client server hit the scene. And that stack became massively disaggregated. And the folks who tried to kind of keep these things stitched together into monolithic silos uh, ultimately you know, weren't successful. Right. And, mm -hmm. and either you know, had to kind of change their strategy or drifted off into the sunset. Um, and, and so we certainly was influenced by that history and looking forward at what we saw happening in this space. I'd say as well, looking at a lot of the innovation coming out from open source projects and startups in this space as well, doing some new and exciting things in networking. Um, you know, there was a big keynote yesterday in the panel discussion where a, a venture capitalist started talking about, hey, networking's cool again. Uh, right, and, right. and I couldn't agree more where we're seeing startups come in and do really, really interesting things really, really well. And what we're trying to do is create a model where those startups don't have to develop their own operating system and develop their own hardware and then all the management tools that go on top of it, let them focus at what they're good at, right, right. which is a certain piece of IP, right. and let us work through you know, things like the Open you know, Networking Foundation to drive um, a disaggregation of the stack, making them successful. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting way too to kind of build your community almost indirectly, if you will. It's not like you have to sign a bunch of partner agreements and you can't keep track of all these startups and all your alliance people running around, but by putting it into the open source sphere, especially with the Linux Foundation, just automatically yeah. you're exposed to all these different types yeah. of new companies and innovations. 
uh, and, and that, that, that exposure goes both ways. Absolutely. So, so it's a really cool trend where we're seeing these big companies donate parts of these things into this kind of formal situation that is the Linux Foundation so it has a home and a place to live and grow. Absolutely. So I want to shift gears a little bit. Yeah. Uh, today's keynote is about 5G, a lot of talk about 5G, Mobile World Congress is all about 5G, but you know, some people saying, wait, it's not here yet, it's far out, but, but clearly I think the message this morning from Sandra uh, and also on theCUBE yesterday is it's coming, but you, know, you don't just turn it on one day, <laughs> you got to yeah. put all the pieces in place. So what's kind of uh, Dell EMC's perspective on 5G? Where are you guys uh, on this journey? Yeah, you know, for us, in terms of where we play kind of at an infrastructure level uh, in, in, the, in the data center, you know, for us, the key step right now is to get to this model where we can decouple function from location, which is what you know, the telecoms and the mobile networks have been trying to do through things like NFE. Um, and so, what we've been trying to do is help them on that journey long before we even get to the point where 5G is kind of you know, knocking at the door, working with them today to put in the right infrastructure um, you know, capable of supporting highly virtualized workloads and also capable of supporting a variety of different software-defined networking solutions. Um, if you get those, those components right, you're setting yourself with a really, really good foundation for 5G. So if 5G gets here and you haven't kind of decoupled function and location yet in terms of your infrastructure or strategy, that's going to be a tough one. So what we're trying to do is you know, shepherd that along and move that as fast as we can right now. Right. And we got um, Dell EMC World coming up pretty soon, right? That's right. You Hope got to see you guys there. We'll previews of this, or what, what can we expect to well, see? Well, it, it'll be it'll be interesting. So this is the first time that, as a combined company, we're doing this event in Vegas. Uh, we had sort of a preview in October, kind of as a newly closed, you know, transaction. Right. Right. This will have like the full force effect of the combined, you know, Dell EMC, you know, uh, you know, firm coming together to put on a great show. So. Um, looking forward to it, uh, huge venue. I know you guys play a prominent role there. Yep. I'm hoping to see you guys there as well. There will be, yes, there will be lots of announcements. Um, I'm not going to go get myself in trouble by saying <laughs> what any of those are four weeks in advance of what that's no going to happen. Or anything, Keep huh? No hints or anything. No hints. But you will, certainly on the networking side, you'll hear a couple of announcements from us in terms of uh, new products that we'll be talking about. Uh, and and uh, we'll, we'll be All right, so I'll, I'll ask you the softer way to get to the same answer, but yeah, I'm not okay. going to give you the answer. But you know, kind of looking forward, 2017, you know, what are some of your priorities, you know, kind of top of mind, you know, that you guys are working on where if we see you a year from now, you report back that, you know, kind of here's what we did in 2017. Well, cl clearly this, this OS 10 strategy that we have building upon this base is going to be key for that. So continuing to support the, the donations that we've made uh, through the Linux Foundation and OpenSwitch, uh, you know, bringing in additional partners to develop on top of that to get their IP ready to be able to take advantage of that uh, will be a key focus for us. Um, but as well, you know, there's um, you know, some, some key networking speed transitions coming up that you got to keep pace with uh, uh, from a roadmap perspective, so you'll probably hear some things about that. Um, and then, you know, as well, just thinking from a Dell EMC perspective, um, as we look at kind of how our portfolio as a company is evolving, you know, a big shift towards software-defined storage models, um, converged infrastructure, hyper-converged infrastructure, and so on the networking side, we're clearly trying to do everything we can to position ourselves to be a value add in any of those solutions today. So that'll be sort of the, the hint of the areas you okay. can expect to hear That's about good. in May. That's a good little hint. Yeah. It's a month to uh, Dell EMC World again, the first uh, combined Dell EMC World. In last Vegas. year there in Vegas. Well, last Vegas. year we had EMC World in Vegas and yep. Dell World, Dell EMC World, it got in very Austin. confusing. Now there's just one. We're like, <laughs> is it the Vegas one or the Austin one? So now there's just one, it's easy to keep one, track. One for him to rule them all. We look forward to Michael coming on. We had him on at both as well as VMworld and, and uh, it's always great to get his, his uh, take as well. Yeah, be so uh, Drew, thanks for uh, stopping by and we look forward to seeing you in about a month in Vegas. Likewise, thanks guys. All right. Great time. <laughs> Drew Schulke, Scott Ranovitz, Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE from Open Networking Summit 2017. Thanks for watching, we'll be back after this short break.